Let's head right over to Craig now with that 5 a.m. advisory. Craig. All right, guys, take a look at it. I'm going to step into the picture here in just a moment. I wanted to give you a chance to see the whole thing, though, before I step in. This is the new 5 a.m. update, and you can see the location right now, 40 miles east of Freeport on Grand Bahama Island. And uh, I can tell you this thing now moving west at one mile per hour. This is the same as it was at the 4 o'clock update. It is essentially stalled. So what we're waiting for is when it will start to resume its motion and eventually make a turn more to the northwest. That's coming later today, but this is just sitting there over Grand Bahama and battering the island. We've seen this uh, eye very well defined and it's actually kind of regenerating. It's gone through a couple cycles where uh, the eye wall develops kind of a second area and it kind of collapses in and kind of reforms the eye wall. There's also been some convection or thunderstorm development around this. It's an incredibly powerful storm. These winds earlier up around 180 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds now at 165. It is actually forecast to weaken a little bit and we're going to take a look at that forecast track right now. Notice the hurricane warnings up for the Florida coast. The 5 a.m. update showing with the new track that it is still going to be just offshore and you'll notice it weakens to a category four storm. As it continues to move north, it will eventually pick up a little more shear. That should further weaken it, but still you're looking at a major hurricane passing through the Georgia coast, uh, the Georgia coastline and then up towards South Carolina. Now I'm going to zoom in to, towards Hatteras here because the actual track comes very close to Ocracoke and to Buxton uh, Hatteras. We're going to be watching this so carefully, passing by most likely as a Category 2 hurricane in the center uh, sometime late Thursday night into early Friday and then it accelerates off to the northeast from there. So we'll continue to watch that locally today. Skies are going to be variably cloudy. We'll see our high temperature today right around 85 degrees, slight risk of a shower. So our Labor Day looks pretty good, but for folks down in the Bahamas, it's been devastating. And Madison Kimbrough joins us now with a look at some of those stories coming out of it. Yeah, Craig, social media is giving us the first look at the destruction Hurricane Dorian caused in the Bahamas. Now take a look at this video as it shows someone inside of their home in Abaco. You can see the family taking cover in their bathroom and it's hard to see, but the floor is covered in about an inch of water. Now, if we look at another video right over here, you can see the same person tweeted the video of this extreme flooding in Abaco. Obviously, it's going to be a long road to recovery for the island. And then this right here, pray for the Bahamas is going viral right now as the people call out for help. Now, we will keep you posted on all the updates from the island and bring you the latest. ABC News has a reporter on the ground in the Bahamas. Here's now an update from Serena Marshall. Wind gusts breaking 220 miles per hour. Storm surge hitting 20 feet as Hurricane Dorian bashed the Bahamas for nearly 24 hours. ABC's Marcus Moore riding out the devastating storm. We've seen large pieces of debris flying in the other direction. All right, and it looks like we've just uh, lost power. Scenes of utter devastation just starting to come in. The strongest hurricane on record to strike the region now inching towards the Florida coastline. We are continuing to make all necessary precautions, and so I think it's important that, that we prepare uh, for this to potentially uh, make landfall here. Here in Florida, they've ordered nearly 5,000 National Guardsmen activated and up along the coast in South Carolina, nearly 850,000 individuals have been evacuated, while North Carolina has now declared a state of emergency. Serena Marshall, ABC News, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Well, right now, Virginia Task Force 2, based out of Virginia Beach, is in Florida. So let's head over now to Megan Shen. Megan, what is their status? Ashley, Virginia Task Force 2 is in Orlando, Florida, to be specific. Everyone's preparing to respond to Hurricane Dorian right now. Here are some pictures of the team at the convention center. Right now, it's hurry up and wait for the storm. In the meantime, team members train on water rescues and environmental medical hazards. The team is also collecting data on the powerful hurricane. Dan, Ashley back to you guys. Well, two shelters in Virginia are helping out animals evacuated because of Dorian. The Norfolk SPCA took in 34 animals from a shelter in Beaufort County, South Carolina. Those animals arrived yesterday and are settling in just fine. The SPCA is closed today for Labor Day, but tomorrow they're extending their adoption hours in hopes of finding homes for these extra shelter pups. And the Richmond SPCA is expecting 45 dogs and cats from Florida. Moving the animals that already need a home creates room in the Florida shelters for pets impacted by Dorian. 